Hey, it is me, GV, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Let's 100% Fallout New Vegas. I know I've been a broken record lately, but I really do want to just say thank you so much for watching the series. It has reinvigorated my passion for YouTube. It has reinvigorated, I mean, with a combination of things, like Enderal and Dark Souls. But also, this series really has just uh, been doing well, and it makes me so happy, because I really enjoy my time with it, and I've just been getting such great feedback, uh, and people seem to be really digging it. So, if you're one of those people, thank you. I, I know, even if you're just casually watching, you still make this thing happen, so thank you so much. Um, I was kind of scared there for a while, as I keep, as I've been mentioning a lot lately, but this series have really, has really, seemingly, turned things around, at least for the, for the recent time being. So anyways, thank you so much, uh, seriously, from the bottom of my heart, for watching, and hopefully, enjoying. Now let's get into it, shall we? So in the last episode, we completed Black Mountain. That scares me every single time. We completed Black Mountain, and uh, we did it pretty quickly there. Tabitha ran off uh, doing her own thing, and um, now there's other stuff that we can do here. However, I think we're going to shift gears completely. Um, I'm trying to do all of these quests in a good, you know, in a, in a, in a way that's going to make sense, in a way that is going to allow us to do most things. So there are other things here. I mean, I guess we could... I guess we could do it. Yeah, you know what? Hi, Lily. Hello again, dear. Hi. Um, it's time for us to part ways, actually. Aw, oh, Grandma will miss her little pumpkin. Are you sure? I know, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you too, Grandma, but uh, why don't you head on back to the Lucky 38? Nice children shouldn't play in places like that, dearie. That's the sort of place Leo likes, but if you insist... Yeah, I kind of do. Oh, okay, she's just gonna disappear, I guess. The reason for sending Lily off is because, of course, as most of you probably know, there is another companion here, and I think they are in the prison building. Well, also, what the heck is going on here? Centaur. Okay, relax, buddy. Alright, let's head into the prison building, shall we? Now, I think this is the right one. Uh, again, it's been 20 years since I've played this quest, so... Just... Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why it's been so long since i played this quest. This is one of the more interesting quests in the game. But either way, uh, we have a very hard terminal there. We have a normal terminal there. We have a toy car there. I know toy car you want to pick up in Fallout 3, but I don't remember about Fallout New Vegas. So let's activate this. Hermes Communications Incorporated Black Mountain Submatrix System Online, entry number one. I don't know if we've read these or, or already or not, because we did read a whole bunch of terminals previously. As if I don't have enough pointless things to do here, Tabitha wants me to start... Okay, okay, yeah, this is new. As if I don't have enough pointless things to do here, Tabitha wants me to start keeping a log of all the repairs I do. So here's my first log entry. I fixed up several old terminals that were left over in the intact buildings here. I wonder what she's planning to use them for. Entry number two. Apparently, the mutants raided a caravan today. One of their rifles jammed. Took about seven minutes to fix. I also performed minor maintenance on the broadcasting tower outside. It's tempting to think that I could just have pulled a switch there and taken this accursed station off the air. No doubt she would have killed me soon afterwards, but it might have been worth it just to see the look on her face. Oh, and one thing I didn't mention is that we turned off radio sounds due to copyright and YouTube, but uh, there is a radio station. You can hear Tabitha basically just saying crazy things, and that's usually how most people are going to find um, this quest crazy, crazy, crazy. We didn't do it that way just because, again, we had to keep the radio off, but that is why this is at a radio station and everything like that. The mutant with the scar across his face, whom I've taken to calling Cuddles, stopped in today and asked me to fix his car. I told him that's outside my expertise and seriously thought he was going to kill me. Tried to escape today. Tabitha had one of her men beat me senseless when they caught me. Now they lock me up in the next room whenever I'm not working on something. Oh, and I fixed a toaster. Cuddles came in about his car again. He even brought a container of gas and asked that asked if that would help. I tried to tell him that gas was not the problem, but he got really angry and dragged me outside. Tabitha killed him herself before things got too ugly. At least I don't have to hear about his damn car anymore. Tabitha came in today and said she's concerned about my safety. She's insisted that I change the lock on my door to acquire a password using one of the other computers I fixed. I'm really starting to regret ever fixing those. The password is 12345678. Like anyone who cares will ever read this. That's where you're wrong, friend. So that gives us the password to this terminal here, which of course will probably let us open the door 
to that. Which is kind of unfortunate, because that means we lost out on a bit of uh, experience. That's why usually I try to hack this stuff myself before getting the passwords. Because, you know, then you can get some experience and, uh, yeah. But either way... Wow, that's a very lackadaisical reaction to somebody busting into a locked uh, prison area. But, okay. Hello? Took you long enough. So can I go now? Man, I do not remember him having that... That I don't remember his voice sounding like that, but also it's been 20 years since I've used any companions or have played a decent playthrough of Fallout New Vegas, apparently. What do you mean, took me long enough? Sorry. I assume the only reason you'd fight past a horde of super mutants and pick the lock on my cell is if you heard my cry for help on the radio. But maybe you're just sightseeing. So since the door's open and all, can I go now? Who, who are you? Name's Raul. Raul Alfonso Tejada. I'm the mechanic around here. Then why does your jumpsuit say Miguel? Probably because it used to be Miguel's. Whoever he was. How about if you let me go, huh, boss? You're the mechanic around here? <sighs> no. No, boss. I'm a prisoner of the crazy super mutant with the wig and the glasses. I was kind of hoping you were here to set me free. But maybe I'm not a pretty enough damsel for that. Oh, Raul, huh? you're so pretty. What are you talking about? You look great. That, that complexion, beautiful. It's okay by me. Enjoy your freedom. Alrighty then. I'll just head out. Alone. By myself into the dangerous waste. Actually, do you want to tag along with me? Anything's better than staying here. Let's go. Well, that was easy. Raul's giving you the regular maintenance perk. Um, yeah, Raul's a companion that I used, like, maybe once and for a very short period of time. He's probably the one that I know the least about, just because, I don't know, probably most playthroughs I didn't complete crazy, 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 and then also... Maybe the one that I did, I just really didn't use him. So, yeah, I, I, I think Raul's a, a character that people like because he's so lackadaisical and, and sarcastic. Um, I really don't know much about him, though, and he just signed on without a second thought. So that was easy. Let's take a look at the perk that he gave us, shall we? We go to stats and then perks. We have got regular maintenance. While Raul is a companion, the condition of weapons and armor decays more slowly. I was literally thinking, God, I hope that's what it is. And God, that's exactly what it is. That is, that has got to be like literally the best perk. Uh, at least for my play style. Holy crap. Well, let's talk to him at least a little bit. I can't believe we're allowed inside the Lucky 38. That place has been a legend since before the war. Uh, Bud, how the hell do you know about that? We literally just met and have not talked about that whatsoever. Tell me about yourself. Sure, boss. What do you want to know? Who are you? You forget about me already, boss? You sure you didn't take a blow to the head or something? My name is Raul Alfonso Tejada. Okay, we already did this one, obviously. Probably. Um... I want to ask you something else about yourself. I'm an open book, boss. Granted, the book's in Spanish and some of the pages have fallen out. But I'm an open book. <laughs> already, already his dialogue is pretty funny. Um, how can I make the best use of your skills? I'm not much use besides being a portable encyclopedia, really. I guess you could use me as a packed Brahmin. But my knees aren't so good. Anymore. Okay, wow, this is like the companion companion, I guess. I don't believe that. You must have some skills. That's nice of you to say, boss. But I'm an old man. Not much use to anybody anymore. Time was... I was a pretty good shot with a pistol. I guess I'm still half decent. These old bones aren't much use in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, though. I can also do maintenance work on your stuff. I don't have the supplies for a real repair job, but I can keep your gear working longer. Lots of older people are still useful to their friends and communities. Yeah, maybe you can introduce them to me, if we find them, because I've never met one. Jeez, Raul. Okay, we'll do one more dialogue option here. Let's talk about something else. Anything to hold your attention, boss. Tell me about New Vegas. It's big, it's bright, and it's one of the biggest cities still left from before the war. 
Well, mostly anyway. It used to be just a curiosity. The buildings were pre-war. But it's just as full of raiders and barbarian tribes as any place else. Then Mr. House took over. Got the power turned back on. And got the tribes reformed into something civilized. And now they run his casinos for him. Nothing else right now. Sure, boss. Okay, now, Raw. Ooh, I like you. Straight to the point. He keeps our stuff repaired. And... I don't know. He just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> I really like his character so far. Yeah, I don't remember much about him at all. I know I completed his side quest at one point. Speaking of, uh, let's go try that. So, Raul's intre uh, interesting in terms of, like, his... Uh, side quest. Oh, also, we never read these and I said I was going to. So this is about Cass's side quest with the Crimson Caravan and everything. This is an agreement between the Crimson Caravan Company and the Van Graffs to undercut or eliminate all other rival caravan companies in the region, such as the Gunrunners and Cassidy Caravans. In the case of Cassidy Caravans, Gloria Van Graff has agreed to use mercenaries against Cassidy Caravans to drive down the company's value, allowing Alice McLafferty to purchase the remaining assets at a bargain price. So, they did Cass real dirty. Letter to Gloria from the, uh, wait, who was Gloria? Oh, Gloria Van Graft, right? Yeah, because it's Alice McLafferty. Right, so this is from the, uh, okay, so yeah, this one's from the Van Grafts, and this one's from, um, Alice McLafferty. Dear Miss Van Graft, it has come to my attention that Cassidy Caravans has suffered a number of setbacks recently. I can only hope that these latest unfortunate events drive that young booze hound of an owner to finally sell me her remaining assets. As per our agreement, I have bent my not inconsiderable efforts towards weakening your competitors, the gun runners. You can expect a mysterious and sudden surge in sales in the new in the near future. Sincerely, AM. Who I wonder who could, who that could be. Could it be Alice McLafferty? Repair note number three. Raul Ronda made me angry, so I threw this. Now it doesn't seem to work. Please fix. And that was of course from Tabitha. Okay, so let's give Raul's companion quest a shot. So how this one works is uh, there are three conversations. Uh, we are looking for Novak, by the way. Don't remember exactly where it is now that we have this thing. Uh, nipped in through... Where the hell is Novak? There we go. Uh, now that we have that explorer perk, yeah, things are getting a little tricky to find exactly. Uh, but anyways, how this one works is you need to talk to three separate people with Raul in tow. Um, and the one that's scary is this one here, the Ranger Andy. I totally forgot. We shouldn't have done this. We should not have talked to Ranger Andy, um, as many people have pointed out. But, uh, worst case scenario, uh, scenario, it does sound like a bug, which means that if we can't do it, we can use console commands because I'm fine with using console commands to fix bugs, and this does sound like a bug. Uh, either way, Cliff Briscoe's bung- wait, where's Andy's bungalow? There we go. So we're gonna talk to Ranger Andy here and hope that it triggers a dialogue from Raul, and I'm not sure exactly how this works. Let's just talk to him. get the hang of that takedown. I had trouble learning it at first, too. Right. What do you do here, Andy? Right now, a whole lot of sitting on my keister and counting cracks in the ceiling. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. On better days, I help keep the peace. Boone and Vargas watch the road. I watch the town. Tell myself I'm doing some good. You are doing some good. You're with the NCR, right? Was was with them. That was back when my arm and leg used to work better. I still like to pretend I'm a ranger, though. I'll check in with the guys up at the station pretty regular on the ham radio. Sometimes they stop by, tell me they're paying their respects, the smug bastards. They haven't been responding to me last couple days. I guess they got tired of hearing me talk, but it still got me a little worried. Hell, listen to me talk, like some damn mother hen. Andy, you do not give yourself credit, man. Would you feel better if I checked on your NCR friends for you? Uh, no. No, they're gonna think I'm having trouble letting go. They're good soldiers. I don't give them enough credit. Ranger Andy is the best character in Fallout New Vegas. Changed my mind. See, I'm hip with memes. Tell me about the Rangers. They're the NCR's finest. A one-man platoon, each of them. You got a job where even thinking about it would scare a man senseless? That's when you bring in the Rangers. And if you see a squad of veterans, guys who are in their black armor, well, you won't find a more beautiful sight. Or guys who found the ranger armor, or the veteran armor. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we are going to run through all of this dialogue, starting with this. Did, did, did you do something with your leg? Yeah. Mate, I think that might actually be the one that's supposed to trigger Raul's dialogue. What happened? What did you do? 
Uh, what do you do here, Andy? Tell me about the Rangers. What happened? Uh, let's talk about something else. You're with the NCR, right? Let's talk about something else. Uh, did you do something to your leg, which we already did? Let's talk about something else. And goodbye. Hey, uh, wait a sec. I know what I said, but if you find yourself by Ranger Station Charlie, let me know what you find. I'd be interested. Sure thing, bud. Now, Raul, come on, buddy. Come on. Come on. Do the thing. Come on. What can I do for you, boss? Oh, come on, Raul. Come on, buddy. Okay, that's not good. Yeah, so he's supposed to talk to us about uh, Ranger Andy here. The Ranger, Ranger Andy is one of the people that uh, we have... Hey, boss. Yes! Can I ask you something? It worked! Oh, my God. We're actually getting the triggers now, folks. Can you believe it? Sure. What's on your mind? What do you think of guys like Ranger Andy? Hell yeah! So many people were scared that this wouldn't trigger, and I didn't even have to use the console. What do you mean, guys like Ranger Andy? I mean, guys who have a world of experience doing what they do, but have to give it up because they're getting old and slow, or too injured. Okay, here we go. So, I don't know if you have to pick the right answers or anything. I think it, it, any choice is, is fine, but we're going to go with what our character would choose, obviously. Just because someone's crippled doesn't mean they're useless. All that experience is invaluable. Yeah, I suppose you can still teach. Take a less active role in the world. That's not so bad. Is that what you did? Would it surprise you to know that I used to be a gunslinging adventurer? I grew up in a place called Hidalgo Ranch, just outside Mexico City. It wasn't much, just a bit of a farm, with a house for three generations of Tejadas. I wasn't the best behaved kid. I was quick with my hands with a pistol or a wrench. And I wasn't afraid to get into fights over it. I never killed anybody, but I had my share of run-ins with the police. Mostly my family kept me in line. This was before the war. We were far enough away from Mexico City when the bombs fell that we missed the worst of it. But things got bad quick. Go on. Just a few days after Mexico City was vaporized, refugees started pouring down the road to our ranch. We helped who we could, but there were so many. Eventually, my father started turning people away before we ran out of food. Things got violent. My father and I got our guns, and we drove them off. What happened then? About two dozen men came back in the night after we'd gone to sleep. They set fire to the ranch house and barred the doors from the outside. My whole family was trapped inside. I smelt the smoke, and I got myself and my little sister, Rafaela, out through a window. But everyone else, my parents, my grandmother, my two brothers, and two of my sisters, all died. What happened then? Rafaela and I ran. We were pursued by some of the men who attacked our home. But I was always a good shot. The ones who came after us, I killed. The rest, I left be. I had to take care of Rafaela, not throw my life away. On revenge. I feel a sneeze. Uh, uh, uh. <coughs> oh, that was a big one. <clears throat> Sorry, not to take away from the emotional impact of this backstory. You can't think it was your fault. No one could stand against a dozen armed men all alone. I know that, boss. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just getting sentimental in my old age. Anyways, forget it. Just wanted that off my chest. Okay, sweet. So that was the hard one. There are two more uh, little, um, uh, you know, triggers for Raul's quest. And uh, that was the one where if you talk to Ranger Andy beforehand, it might glitch. But I would imagine if you're playing on PC like I am on Steam, you're probably going to be good. You know, I, I don't know what, would, what factor would cause it to glitch out if mine didn't. Anyways, I don't remember the other two NPCs, so I'm going to go figure that out. And we could maybe do Raul's quest in one go, or at least get the quest. So I will see you people in just one second. Yeah, you people, you heard what I said. Alrighty, folks, so one of these people we actually already met, and they are in Camp McCarran. The other person we're not going to meet for a while, so we won't be able to finish Raul's quest. 
but we can at least, or start Raul's quest, I should say, but we can at least do two out of three conversations that you need to trigger it. And hopefully this one works too, because we have already talked to this person, so I'm a little worried, but everybody uh, in my comment section was always worried about Ranger Andy, not this person. So I assume everything should be all good. Now we're looking for a guy with a unique rifle, and I have no idea where they are. Uh, it's none of these people who we have talked to a lot. Oh, boy. Camp McCarran is so big. I should have probably found this person before even trying to look for them. They should be around here somewhere. Um, we're looking on our little compass to the bottom left uh, to see where we can spot any uh, actual little markers, which would indicate a person. So there are some over this away. Uh, let's see. We're looking for a specific person. They were out here last time. We won't go quietly. The Legion can count on that. So I assume they're out here again. Yeah. We're not looking for unnamed NCR troopers. Oh boy, where is this person? Oh my god. Uh, come on, man. They were out here last time. I'm just wondering if they cycle to go into the, uh, into the, into the Camp McCarran Terminal building. Um, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to just search for him. Alrighty, I'll see you all once I find this person. Okay, so I waited until like about 7 or 8 p.m. Because I remember we talked to this guy when it was nighttime. And here he is, the guy with Le Long Carabine or whatever it was called. Howdy, what brings you back? Uh, I just got to run through your dialogue, friend. Have you always been with the first recon? Used to be a ranger. One of the first they sent out east back before we took the dam. Observation and reconnaissance. We took the lay of the land, checked out the locals, and kept ourselves inconspicuous. A couple friends of mine were the first to scout the dam. That was back in 73, if I recall. A lot of those rangers are dead now. Vegas always chewed men up. It's just a little more literal nowadays. No, because it's a it's a it's a it's a place you know, that can't chew people literally. You got got to read up on what literal means, bud. Why did you leave the rangers? Well, that wasn't really a matter of choice. Got myself caught by legionaries up near Malpay. They had themselves some fun with me. Mangled my hands and feet pretty good. Wasn't much good with the pistol after that. Wasn't gonna be trekking across the waste on any more long scouts either. How did you manage to escape Malpay? Caesar's boys figured I wasn't going anywhere after what they'd done to me. So they didn't bother tying me up. I crawled out of there on my elbows and knees. Must have looked a sight. Then I rolled down an embankment into the Colorado. I guess I had a mind to drown rather than give Caesar's boys the satisfaction of killing me. But a couple of rangers happened to be watching from across the river. They jumped on in and pulled me out of there. Lucky break, they said. How long have you been stationed here? Going on six months now, but I reckon we'll be moving out soon enough. Can't talk about the details. Till then, we'll man the towers and keep an eye on the fiends. We've had more than our share of trouble from their direction. Whole thing smells of Caesar to me. Of course, that's just guesswork. But I still bet a few caps he's stirring up the locals against us. Goodbye. Always a pleasure. Keep yourself safe. Also you, bud. Now, Raul, you do the magic thing, okay? You walk right up to me and give me some shit. Come on, give me some sugar. Come on. Come on. Oh, don't tell me you're not gonna trigger for this one. Uh, we'll make sure we'll just run through his stuff. Got a second to talk, boss. Aha! I'm just so surprised things are actually working out. Sure, what's on your mind? Meeting Corporal Sterling. Well, it kind of got me thinking. Here's a guy that's been beat all to hell, right? I mean, he could have retired from the service, but instead he signs back on and does what he can. You think he did the right thing? Yeah, I don't agree with most of these. I agree with this one. I think it's good that he's so devoted to his duty. More people should act that way. You think so, boss? Because I remember a time when a lot of people stuck to their duty no matter what. It ended with nuclear bombs falling on my hometown. You're talking about the Great War. What do you remember about it? After the fire, I knew my sister and I couldn't stay at Hidalgo Ranch anymore. The refugees still wanted me dead. They even put a bounty on me. I remember how scared Rafaela was. I told her if she came with me, we'd see the vaqueros. She used to love the rodeo, especially the trick rider. We figured maybe we could find help in Mexico City. We were young. We didn't know what had happened, really. We didn't understand about the bombs. 
Wasn't Mexico City basically annihilated in the Great War? I don't think it was as hard hit as D.C. or Bakersfield. But it was bad enough. By the time we got there, the city was a radioactive ruin. Still, the city was full of looters, already forming into the beginnings of raider tribes. Crime was bad before the war, but now it was a nightmare. We were living like scavengers, scraping by on what little food we could find, always looking for medicine for my burns. And then, of course, the radiation started to kick in, turning me into this handsome devil you see before you. Sounds pretty bad. You're a poet of understatement, boss. But there were moments it was almost worth it. I still remember finding that novelty costume shop. I was just looking around for something I could slice up to wrap my burns when I saw the Vaquero outfit hanging on the rack like it hadn't been touched. I took it, not like anybody else needed it, you know, and wore it back to our camp, Rafaela Lab, for the first time since the bombs had fallen. Wasn't it dangerous to be so, be dressed so noticeably? It was. I started to build up a legend. Sometimes it headed off trouble, but most of the times it just started more. Young punks looking to prove themselves would come looking for me, but my eyes were sharp and my guns were quick. For a while, it seemed like we might even survive there, until, until Rafaela. Go on, what happened to Rafaela? She went out to find some food one day. I was sick, so I stayed at our camp. I guess it must have been the beginning of radiation poison. Anyway, it was supposed to be safe, but some raiders happened to pass through where she was scavenging. I won't speak of what they did to her. When I found her body, the only way to recognize her was this funny little scar on her knee from when she was a little girl. Jesus Christ, Fallout New Vegas. That's pretty gosh darn dark. That's terrible, Raul. Terrible doesn't begin to cover it, boss. I led my whole family down. First the ranch, now Rafaela. I was the last Tejada. I guess maybe I went a little crazy then. I took my guns and went back to that market. I didn't have many bullets, but I had enough. After the raiders were dead, I salvaged what I could from the store. I was tired. I just wanted to be alone forever. So what did you do? I left Mexico City behind. I made my way out to the Gulf Coast. Eventually, I found an old Petro Chico refinery nobody had claimed. I stayed there for a little while, and I thought a lot about my life. I thought about the guns I'd lived by and what they'd gotten me. I decided my guns hadn't gotten me anything, and it was time to give it up. I took off the old Vaquero outfit and put on a Petro Chico jumpsuit. The name tag said Miguel. So I started using the name myself. Eventually, I made it to Arizona. That's another story, boss. Okay, so that's two out of three. Now, the last guy is not going to be available for a while. I mean, we could go to it right now, but I'm not going to do that. What can I do for you, boss? I'm sorry, bud. I really actually do like you, but I think I need to head on without you. Good call. I mean, if that's what you really want, boss. Okay, you're a little too over, over eager for that, but uh, yeah, let's meet up at the Lucky 38. Hey, as long as you're not asking me to go back to Black Mountain, I'm a happy old man. I am not. I'm just the Lucky 38. Okay, folks, so I know we don't have much time here, but we're going to start something. I know this has been a dialogue-heavy episode, uh, but we're going to, to make up for that, we're going to do a little something. Oh, no. When I reloaded that save, we didn't actually grab Hidden Valley. Crap. Uh, I think... The NCR correction. I hate... Don't you just hate it when, like, what... The place where you need to go is surrounded by areas in all equal, like, uh, distances, you know? And you don't have one that's super-duper close. Oh, well, it's fine. We're gonna try to head over to Hidden Valley Ranch, um, because... Where is that, by the way? Because the next order of things that I really want to do requires us on doing... Requires us to do this before we do Veronica... Uh, 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 not in that way. Before we do, uh, Veronica's side quest, okay? Because if we... So what I think will happen is if we go over here and, um, do Veronica's side quest... If we go over here with Veronica, I think we will still pass the quest. So as for the 100%, it'll still be, you know, fine. But we're not gonna pass it in the way that I would like to do it. Because this quest actually is pretty interesting. So I want to do this quest without coming here. 
uh, with Veronica, and then we'll go and get Veronica, and uh, we'll be... Oh, God. Now I'm in my head. Is her name Veronica? Whatever her name. We'll call her V. How about that? We'll come back here with V uh, after we do that quest, and we will... Um, then we'll, uh, yeah, then we'll then we'll do her side quest. Because, yeah, this is where things get a little tricky again. Uh, we're doing a lot of tricky stuff right at the start here, but mainly because I want to get the, uh... Whoa. Oh, that might not be good. Okay, we're going to save over this one here. I don't think that's good, but we'll head inside anyway. So this is Hidden Valley. And in Hidden Valley, you'll notice there is a, uh, a working fan. Now, that's kind of weird, right? Like, why would there be a working fan in a seemingly completely empty little hidden valley? You know what I mean? Huh. Not trying to spoil anything, just making you think. Like, what would that mean? Now, we're looking for a certain something. And I think it might be this one, which also, suffice to say, would make a perfect thumbnail. So let's do that real quick. Okay, I really like these bright... Yeah, these these make for some good-ass thumbnails. These bright uh, murals. Okay, not load. Okay, so I think it's this one. Open door to Hidden Valley Bunker. Yeah. So this is a little mysterious, huh? We'll walk inside, though, real quick. We've got a bedroll. And we've got an intercom. You hear nothing. Hello? Is anyone there? Anyone home? Guess I'll just see myself out. Oh. Uh, wait a second. How do you actually... I'm forgetting how to actually start this quest now. I thought you just walk up to the intercom. Is there another thing that we have to do? Um, the only other thing I can think... Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is I think there are multiple of these... Uh, there's multiple bunkers. In fact, this might be one right here. In fact, it is. Okay. So let's go inside this one. Let's go, boy. Should I send Rex back, by the way? Uh, he has been helping out quite a bit. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay, I think this is where we want to be. Maybe? Oh, no. Okay, nothing again. Although that's locked with an easy lock. Uh, let me figure it out, folks, and I'll see you in a second. Okay, folks, so here's the deal. Yeah, normally you get sent here because of another quest. Uh, you know, you'll usually be sent here at some point. But because we're coming here of our own volition, uh, first of all, I'll show you where this one actually is. There, There's like a whole bunch of bunkers here. There's where the uh, the actual one is that we need to go to. Uh, you need. Am I still wearing that radiation suit? Oh, wow, I've been wearing that this entire time. Uh, we need this one, please and thank you, and this one. Yeah, so we want to come into this bunker, and what we want to do is you need 100 lockpick. Uh, and if you don't have 100 lockpick, you're going to need to find some other way in. Like I said, you can use Veronica, but I want to do this without Veronica. So then, if we come over here, there's a very hard lock, of which we're going to try to open, uh, since we do have... It won't even let you attempt this if you don't have 100 lockpick, so keep that in mind. Okay, it's somewhere over there. Come on. Come on! Is it really that small? Gosh... How many lockpicks do we have, by the way? 23, okay. Bobby pins. There we go. Oh no, we lost karma. Now, if we walk through... Now, this is a little interesting, isn't it? Door to Hidden Valley Bunker L1. I Hopefully, this is not going to mess anything up. I don't think it will. Uh, Are we really allowed to go this far down? How the hell did you get in here? Normally, I would have already shot you but I'm under orders to bring you to the Elder. Will you come peacefully? I'll speak to your Elder. Lead the way. Okay. I'll take you to him. Follow me. Closely. Or you'll be shot.
And I think that's as good of a place to stop as any. Especially for anybody that's never played Fallout New Vegas and is wondering what the hell's going on here. Uh, well, that might be a hint. 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 Anyways... We're going to end this episode here, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for watching. We've got a lot of stuff to do with this particular place coming up. Uh, and I am looking forward to it. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, thanks to any and all patrons at the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching and hopefully enjoying this series. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.